When, when we first started living on the boat, we had the boat built in 1975, moored it in London originally, then came out to Rickmansworth, and we got a mooring at Hampton Hall Farm, which is uh, uh, up the next lock. It was the first night I met him. <laughs> yeah, I was quite, quite impressed and quite... But I didn't actually expect, when we actually went to see it, that it was only a floor and the boat hadn't been built. <laughs> I think Sue's first impression was, oh dear, what have I let myself in for? Um, when we uh, decided to get married, um, that, that was our option. We, we had the boat. Um, we, uh, I, I was sharing a flat with girls that I worked with, just renting. So uh, neither of us owned our own homes. So um, he'd already got the, uh, sort of got the boat. So that was the you know, sort of, uh, option to, um, <laughs> to live on it. I was quite excited. Um, I thought it, was, it sounded quite fun, but um, I didn't know anything about canals, um, so it was a big learning curve for me. 25 years ago, there was something called poll tax, and I learnt then that uh, people who lived on a boat did not have to pay poll tax, and that was a prime motivator to, for living on a boat. And uh, I found one quite cheaply, and I've been on a boat on and off ever since. Uh, this boat's 70 foot long, um, so we've got uh, two bedrooms. It's a bathroom, a big living room and a uh, kitchen. Um, so we've got plenty of space for, for storage on there. I loved um, the social life. Um, it became, for me, it was like, you know, a big village from London to Birmingham. And um, like when we went boating, going through locks, we'd always I love to chat to people. Uh, so yeah, the social side of it was really, really fun. The wildlife. The peace and tranquility of the canal was, was uh, paramount and the fact that we could uh, untie our ropes and go off in it. So it made holidays a lot simpler. I like, uh, I like being able to go just anywhere. I don't like being in the same place. For too long. I'd be happy enough to be in the same place for say four to six weeks but as far as just mooring up somewhere for the next one year, two years, five years, it just drives me crazy. I don't want to be in the same place all the time. It's, it's just not me. You can get all over the country using a boat um, and we often go up to the Midlands uh, for, for a short period and then come back again. I uh, don't have a permanent mooring when I first got a boat, I was on a permanent mooring in a marina. Um, that came to an end after about six weeks when the owner of the marina realised I was living on the boat and wanted more money, at which point I left. And since then, I've never been on a permanent mooring and would never, ever be on a permanent mooring. So you can moor on the towpath for up to 14 days? Yes, I do have to move every couple of weeks. And yes, it can be a problem because, for example, if the canal is frozen up, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, CRT in their wisdom don't necessarily always know that it's frozen up at the right time. And uh, will suggest that you haven't moved when you've not been able to move. The licence fee is over £1,000 a year. You normally have to pay a mooring fee in addition to the licence fee. It is cheap to live on a boat once you've got your boat. Um, but. There are issues with living on a boat. Um, you have a lot more maintenance to do and to think about. But, um, yeah, it's still pretty cheap to live on a boat. It's far cheaper. You rent a flat around here, it's 200 quid a week, probably, and, count, and uh, council tax on top. On a boat, you bought your boat, you pay your licence, it's £1,000 a year, but for maintenance, it's still a cheap way to live. It's not cheaper to live on a boat. It is cheaper in, the, in annual cost uh, because the square footage is smaller, but per square foot it is far more expensive to live on a boat than it is to rent a flat. There are um, water points, sanitary stations and rubbish uh, bins all the way along the canal, um, operated by Canal and River Trust. And um, the Canal and River Trust is the uh, body appointed to manage the canals on behalf of the nation because the, the canal system was nationalised uh, and uh, so as a result belongs to you and me. One of the things you realise on the boat is just how much water you can get through. A water tank isn't that big, I mean it's, it's fairly big, uh, it's about 50 gallons, but uh, 
So when we're boating, we have to fill it up every day. I use gas for cooking and hot water, but I use, um, I have an electric engine um, that's powered by 24 volt batteries, which is two batteries linked together, and solar panel feeding into the batteries. Um, this is fine for short distance cruising, which I, as a continuous cruiser, have to do. Um, it's not so good if you want to do travel long distances in the winter time. In fact, I'd say it's probably useless. You need an alternative backup power. But for me, for two miles here, two miles there, in the winter, it should be fine. We try to use the canal traders who go up and down selling coal um, and uh, diesel and colour gas. Um, there are, have been the odd occasion where we've needed to stop at a boatyard um, for, uh, for fuel, but uh, by and large we use um, the, the, the narrow boats that go up and down the canal. Uh, there are three types of loos on boats. There's, there's what we call the bucket and chuck it, uh, which is what we're fitted with. Then there's a cassette toilet where you unclip the cassette from the bottom. Uh, they're nicer for people to use, but they're not as easy to keep clean. And then you've got um, loos that flush into a tank. Uh, they're a bit more problematical, in my opinion, because um, you've got to go somewhere and pay to have the tank emptied. I have to say, if there is a disgusting job on a boat to do, it is emptying the toilet. But people with mobile homes will know the same thing, because they, they do the same thing. And they use the same types of porta potty and they use the same waste disposal methods. We used to have our mail sent to my parents' house. So that was a, uh, a trip twice a week over to Potter's Bar to, to collect the mail. Food, um, well, a cycle, cycle on a bike to the supermarket. It's, you know, if I was living in a house, I'd be doing the same sort of thing. Mainly the things like having to fill the water tank up, um, the the hose might be frozen in the middle of winter and you have to go out and try and defrost it so you could uh, get water. Um, so really, I suppose the winter side um, was probably the worst. Um, we had a cold fire, so uh, it was a case of getting up in the morning and it was always fairly cold first thing in the morning. But um, it was something, we were young and it's something we got used to. And, uh, so there wasn't a lot I disliked really. Uh, the, gas, the gas running out halfway through Sunday lunch on a cold winter's day with snow on the ground. Uh, the main disadvantage is winter. I don't like cold weather much. I don't particularly like it when it's wet. In fact, that's the most miserable time for me, is when it's raining the last few days. Just, it just drives me up the wall when it just rains and rains and rains. But there's many more disadvantages to living on a boat in the winter time and they include things like emptying the toilet, fetching water, 12 volt lighting, mucky towpaths. Um, I don't think that living on a boat in the winter is really for people who are, uh, it's not a soft way of life in the winter. It's quite hard in the winter and it's hard because it goes on for so long. But yes, we, we had sort of a few mishaps. Um, one time our boat got hooked on up on the side of the lock and started tilting and of course my daughter was on board so I panicked. Um, we were in a boat uh, lock uh, with another boat so I jumped onto the roof to try and get, wanted to get into the boat because I was worried that my daughter was in there and I slid from one, from our boat onto the roof of the other boat. <laughs> so, um, so yes, it was, uh, yeah, but um, there's lots of mishaps that happen. We've, there'd be so many stories to tell, um, which is why we love the boat so much because it's got, it's got a lot of stories to tell. Um, we were standing on the lock side, waiting for the boats to come up, and we suddenly realised that the water was coming up, but the boats weren't. Um, so we very quickly let the water out, and then realised that the boats had stayed where they were. So we put some water back in again and, and thought, what do we do now? And it was about five hours later, with the help of the crews of about 30 boats that had been stuck either side of the lock, uh, that we got everybody bouncing up and down on the roof of my boat to get the uh, back of my boat down and then everybody bounced on the back of his boat to get the back of his boat down, then the front of mine and the front of his uh, and eventually, letting the water out as we went down, eventually they fell free. I was a bit 
apprehensive when I was pregnant and wondered what it was going to be like and how I would cope. But um, she was very good, very well behaved, and she didn't sort of, she was um, quite sensible. She was brought up with it. And um, I didn't let her out of my sight. I was always really, you know, even when we went boating, she'd come with me in, in a push chair or a pram. And um, uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I always made sure that she was safe. <laughs> we got a mooring in London, um, but um, we then, um, little Emily was going to come along, so we decided that uh, uh, an industrial estate in Park Royal wasn't the sort of place you could bring up uh, a baby. Um, so we, we moved out to Rickmansworth. Booked her into the local school. Um, she used to call the uh, footpath the towpath. Her friends used to like coming down and seeing the boat. <laughs> I went off perhaps 20 years ago when uh, my daughter was born because it's very hard, I think, having uh, a small child, small baby on a boat. It's, it's, I, we found it impossible, to be honest. I mean, there comes a time when the child wants to move around and uh, you've got washing and you've got damp and uh, it, it, was just, it was just a nightmare. So we got off. And then I was off a boat for perhaps five years then, five or six years, and then uh, and then I got another one. We had somebody tried to break into the boat once. Um, they got in here and realised they couldn't get into the rest of the boat because uh, this is the engine room. I think I've, ha I've had more of a problem with, uh, with vandal well, graffiti vandalism. I've had my last boat, on my previous boat, I had it graffitied three times. And on the first two times I was able to, I got there in time to remove the graffiti, but on the Last time, I couldn't remove it and I had to repaint the whole side. We spotted this house for sale going past it one day. So uh, we popped round and had a look literally the next day and uh, made an offer on it. It was our dream to, um, to own a house with a canal at the bottom of the garden. We m moved down here and lived on the boat at the bottom of the garden um, and then gradually uh, moved into the house. It was the big telly in the house that did it, I think that was the <laughs> I mean, I actually think the whole of CRT, it needs to be completely reorganised. Because I think the canals are for everyone, not just for a few, not just for both of them, for everyone. Everyone should have, has an interest in it, but you need people who understand the canals and have a, perhaps a greater vested interest in them to be looking after them. This is where, this is where I live, you know. 